go. We are going to do a week six review for essentials. Um, in week six, we introduced our new structure, compound structure. Um, we've already covered our simple structure and we're introducing a new sentence pattern, um, our SVTDO. Um, we've already done, do you remember the sentence pattern before this one that we've been going over? with an intransitive SVI. SVI, yep. Um, so we're gonna go, these are the two new structures and sentence um, patterns. And today we're gonna go over conjunctions, specifically coordinating conjunctions. Um, our conjunctions are found on chart H and our compound sentence structures reviewed on chart G. Um, our connections between chart A, we called chart A our essentials roadmap essentially or our essentials like master chart kind of ties into everything um, our tie-ins for this week um, number one you know, we're going over conjunctions and conjunctions are necessary to create three um, of our sentence structures we need um, our conjunctions to create compound complex and uh, compound complex sentence structures and then um, for number two connection to chart a um, our conjunctions, that's one of our parts of speech, which are also covered um, on our chart A, our sentence classifications. Um, so that's the tie-in to our chart A that, you know, we first work on memorizing. And uh, let's see, so we're going to just jump right in to our um, conjunctions. We'll look at our definition of a conjunction. Um, we'll fill it in first. A conjunction is a word used to connect words. Connect words. Say connect. Closets. A conjunction is a word used to connect words. Phrases. Phrases. Or clauses. Or clauses together. Okay. So we do have a song for that, and the, the little tune kind of helps us remember. A conjunction is a word used to connect words, phrases, or clauses together. Okay, I'm gonna do it with me one time. A conjunction is a word used to connect words, phrases, or clauses together. Can you do it with me now? Okay. Um, I don't know where my little swiper went. That's okay. We'll just use our hand. Uh, okay. Alrighty. Well, okay. Questions. This is kind of a review as well. Okay. Our conjunction is going to help us to connect words, phrases, or clauses together. So if it's connecting words, it would just be a word like Tristan and Braxton or oil and water. Um, if we have a phrase, do you remember what a phrase is? Do you kind of remember kind of? What do you what do you think a phrase is? One key difference, this phrase does not contain a couple things that clauses do contain. A phrase does not contain both a blank and a blank, but clauses contain both a, do you remember? Mm -mm. They're the two main parts of our sentence. When we're doing like diagramming, we're gonna split those two things, our subject and our mm. verb, subject and our verb. So a phrase does not contain Subject and a, verb. a subject and a verb. So phrases do not contain subjects and verbs. And phrases also, literally, they don't um, they don't give a complete thought, or you know, you can't have a, a complete sentence with a phrase. And there's not a subject and a verb. Um, there, let's see. With a clause, clauses do contain both a subject and a verb. So clauses do contain both a subject and a verb. So those are our differences there and then when we get to clauses that we also have two breakdowns we have our independent clause 
and then our dependent or our subordinate clause. Do you remember the difference between an independent clause and a subordinate or dependent clause? Dependent stands by itself. Mm -hmm. It's dependent, yep. Or, yeah. Depend, no, but it's independent. 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 If you're independent, you stand by yourself. You're independent. You don't need anything else to exist. So an independent clause is like a complete sentence. It stands by itself. It doesn't need anything else for support. Um, whereas a dependent or subordinate clause, it does not, cannot stand alone. It does not um, express a complete thought. It's not a complete sentence. So it needs something to help it. Okay. So those are just a little bit review there because we're going to look now at our compound sentence structure. So our compound sentence structure, if we have a compound sentence, we're going to have two independent clauses, so two complete sentences, right, that can stand alone. And what do we have that's going to connect those sentences in our compound sentence? Compound, we know it. Coordinating conjunction. Yeah, we're generally going to have a coordinating conjunction there that's going to be um, connecting those two complete thoughts. They could stand alone, but they're grouped together and separated by a uh, coordinating conjunction. Okay. So that's what gives us our compound sentence. And if we have, um, let's see, our, co our coordinating conjunctions. What are our coordinating conjunctions? So our coordinating conjunctions, they're going to be the first conjunctions listed on our chart H. I don't know if you can see that very good. If you have your chart H out, they're going to be the first ones listed on your chart H, your coordinating conjunctions. And we do have a little song for our coordinating conjunctions. Um, let's see. We'll go ahead and write these up here. These are our fanboys. Our coordinating conjunctions are also known as our fanboys. So, um, they start like this. Do you remember what they are before we sing the song? Four. Mm-hmm. Four. I didn't say four. Oh, I thought you said four. <laughs> well, four. I gave you the first one. Four. And. Uh-huh. Four. And. Nor. Nor. I can't see. Four. And nor. But. But. Or. Mm-hmm. Or. Yet. Yet. So. So. Right. Okay. And our song goes like this. We start with our coordinating conjunctions. For and nor, but or, yet so. For and nor, but or, yet so. Coordinating conjunctions connect grammatically. Equal words or groups of words such as compound subjects, compound verbs, or compound sentences. I'm not gonna sing with me. Okay. okay. Um, that's okay. Okay, so those are our fanboys, our coordinating conjunctions. For and nor, but or yet so. For and nor, but or yet so. We're gonna use those to connect our independent clauses or our complete sentences. Should get a swiper, we'll get one next time. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll just um, can you give me an example of a uh, compound sentence? Two in com two complete thoughts, two independent clauses joined with a coordinating conjunction. Do you want me to do the first one? Okay, I'll give you one. Um, my mother loves me and she cares for me. Uh, good. So, we have, let's see, my mother loves me, okay? Could that be a complete sentence? Is there a subject and a verb and it makes complete sense? It's a complete thought. Mm -hmm. My mother loves me. Mm -hmm. What's the sentence about? Mom. My mother, mother. What is mother doing? Love. Mother loves me. That my mother loves me. That makes complete sense. But we're going to say my mother loves me. And she cares for me. Okay. 
My mother loves me and she cares for me. She cares for me. Who or what is this sentence about? Mother. We're looking she, at this next one. She I, is, is it a complete she? Cares. What is she doing? She cares. She cares for me. Um, so we have our subject, which is a, it's not just a noun. It's a pronoun. Pronoun, yep. A pronoun. So we have a pronoun, um, subject, a verb. Um, makes complete sense. She cares for me. So we have two independent clauses joined by a coordinating conjunction. So we have a compound sentence. Okay, and then do this again. All right, and so you can give me an example of a compound sentence. My brother plays with me and Helps me, and he helps me. Mm -hmm. My brother plays with me, and he, helps and he helps me. So my brother plays with me. That's a complete sentence. We have our subject and our verb. Okay, we have a complete thought, a complete <laughs> sentence, and he plays and he helps me. He helps me. That's a complete sentence as well. So you have this. That's a, a compound sentence. Okay, and now we'll just look at. We'll look at one of our other examples. So we're going to do, a, this is in our book, page 93. Um, this sentence we'll do, we're going to do labeling and diagramming of a compound sentence. So Jesus, so Jesus saves us. I hope you guys can hear me. Jesus saves us. And he forgives us. And he forgives us. Okay. So, first, we're going to determine what structure we have. We're going to look at our sentence. We're going to look for clauses in our sentence. Do you see one clause? Do you see two? Are they independent? Are they dependent? Um... What do you see? Independent. You see independent clauses? How many? One. No, two. Jesus saves us. Yeah, you see two. Yeah, Jesus saves us. And then we have, what's this? And. And a coordinating conjunction, a conjunction. He forgives us. So we have two sentences that can stand alone, separated by our coordinating conjunction. So we have... A compound sentence. Okay. Whenever we're labeling, we start with what? We just start with our first, our first uh, independent clause. So we've got um, Jesus saves us. Um, who or what is this sentence about? Who or what saves us? Jesus. Jesus. Uh, so Jesus saves us. That's going to make Jesus our what? Noun. It is a noun. That's a proper Pronoun. name. It's a proper noun. Pronoun. No, is it, no, you just said it was a noun, but is subject, it a no. subject? Is our subject. Jesus is our subject, and yes, it's a noun, and it's actually a proper noun, um, Jesus. And then Jesus saves, saves us. Where, so with saves, that makes saves our uh, verb. Saves. saves. Is, he, is this action being transferred to anything? Yes, us. It is. He saves us. So that makes this transitive. transitive and this makes this word direct our object. direct object. Yep. Okay. And then we already said CC. this is our conjunction or our coordinating conjunction CC. Okay. So we've labeled our first um, sentence and our coordinating conjunction. And now we'll look at our second sentence, um, our second independent clause. Um, he forgives us. Who or what is the sentence about? Who or what forgives us? He. He. So that makes he our. Pronoun. It is a pronoun, but it's subject. the subject. Yep. Yeah. So this one is a subject and it's a pronoun. Okay. And then we have Jesus, or sorry, he forgives us. Where's our verb? What is he doing? Forgives. He's forgiving. He forgives. So we have a verb. 
Forgives is our verb. And is this forgives, this action of forgiving being transferred to anything? Is he forgiving us. someone particular? Us. So that makes this, again, transitive. a transitive direct and object. direct object. Right. Very good. Okay. You have got that down, Pat. Okay. So now we'll look at our um, diagramming. Do you want me to do the diagram and you come? Oh, I shouldn't have erased that so you can see it. Um, just kidding. We'll leave that up there. Jesus saves. Yep. It would be easier to diagram it if we can actually see it. Jesus saves us and just kidding. Okay. Yeah, and we'll leave that up there too. Yep. So that was our subject. Noun, our verb, it's transitive, our direct object, and our coordinate junction. Okay, so just kidding. We'll go ahead and do our diagram. Okay, so we have our diagram. We start with our first independent clause first. So what goes in our first box on our diagram line? Jesus. Our subject, right, so Jesus goes there. You wanna do it? You wanna come up here and fill it out? Yeah, sure, for sure. Yeah, so you come up here and fill out the diagram. And what color your new screen? Let's use green. Okay, let's use green. And just remember, um, he isn't normally capitalized, but he is Jesus, so it's and because Jesus, God, or who they are, when we refer to them even in pronouns, um, we capitalize, whereas we don't normally with just anyone. Okay. Perfect. That's it. So he has diagrammed. We've got our subject. We've got our verb. And we have our direct object because we have our transitive verb. So um, we have our coordinating conjunction that's connecting our verbs. He saves and forgives. Um, Jesus, again, um, is now he, our pronoun, he, um, our subject. Our verb forgives and our direct object, us. So that's how we would label and diagram that sentence. I think, was there anything else that I wanted to go over? Um, yeah, I guess the only other thing is we can go over our other conjunctions since we're doing conjunctions, um, coordinating conjunctions, um, our fanboys, that was our main focus today with our um, compound sentence structure. But we also, if you're looking at your chart H, we have correlative conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions, and um, they all have little songs and tunes for correlative conjunctions. It goes like this. Do you remember this song? Correlative conjunctions always come in pairs and connect words of equal importance. You don't want to sing it? Okay, that's how it goes. Correlative conjunctions always come in pairs and connect words of equal importance. Either or, neither nor, both and, whether or, not only, but also not, but. And subordinating conjunctions um, goes like this. Subordinating conjunctions. W, w, w dot Asia dot 
when, while, where, as, since, if, all, the, where, as, unless, be, cause. And then there's conjunctive adverbs. This is a little different, but it's kind of included in here. Um, it says there's a note, conjunctive adverbs are sometimes called adverbial conjunctions or subordinating adverbs. It gives you some examples, but there's a little melody that um, goes with that one too. And it goes like this. Conjunctive adverbs accordingly, besides, consequently, furthermore, hence, however, indeed, moreover, meanwhile, nevertheless, similarly, still, therefore, thus. Okay, so that is a review for today of our conjunctions from chart H, um, our fanboys, our coordinating conjunctions, compound sentence structure, our um, SVTDO sentence pattern, our subject, our transitive verb, and our direct object where it's transferring that action. Um, yeah, our connections. I hope that was helpful. Uh, there is already a week six video posted that is just going through the memory work for Chart H and the songs. Um, so you can check that out too if you're wanting to focus, you know, on that. And this is just a little more overview um, and review of, of week six um, class information. Again, I hope you found it helpful. This is one way that we review at home. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Have any questions, um, leave any comments. Just you can do that down below and I will get back with you as soon as I can. See you next time. Bye.